Hello everyone, it's me again. My name is Wang Fu. I'm eight years old. I live in a city and I study at the Golden Primary School. Nice to meet you. Today I'm gonna read my book, Horrid Henry and the Secret Club, illustrated by Charlie Ross, by Francisca Simon. See, contest. Horrid Harry's Intention, Horrid Harry the, and the Secret Club, Perfect Peter's Horrid Day, Horrid Harry's Birthday Party. Whoa, is that nice? This book is amazing. Let's read it. Chapter 1, Horrid Harry's Intention. Ah, 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 ah. The horrible streets came from behind the nurse needle's closed door. Horrid Harry looked at his younger brother, Perfect Peter. Perfect Peter looked at Horrid Henry. Then they both looked at their father, who stared straight ahead. Henry and Peter were in Dr. Dato's waiting room. Mooney Margaret was there. So, so Susan anxious Henry. Jolly George, Sweetie William, Tommy, Tommy, Lazy Linda, Clever Claire, Ruth Ross, and just about everyone Henry knew. They were all waiting for the terrible moment when Nurse Needle would come there now. Today was the worst day in the world. Today was Injection Day. Horrid Henry was not afraid of spiders. He was not afraid of spooks. He was not afraid of buggers, batteries, Speaky doors and things that go bump in the night. Only one thing scared them. Just thinking about a bus, Harry could barely even say the word injections. Made it shiver and quiver and shake and quake. Nurse Needle came into the waiting room. Harry held his breath. Please let, please let it be someone else, he prayed. William, said Nurse Needle. William, weepy William, burst into tears. Let's have none of that, said Nurse Needle. She took him firmly by the arm and closed the door behind him. I just need a detection, said Daddy. I feel fried. Injection stop you getting ill, said Dad. Injection fight germs. I don't believe in germs, said Harry. I do, said Dad. I do, said Peter. Well, why not, said Harry. That's all. You are having an injection, and that's that. I just want injections, said Perfect Spear. I know how good they are for me. Hard Harry pretended he was an alien who discovered our space to trap or things. Ah, sweet Peter, that's me. Hurry, Harry shouted. That. Ah! Cap the terrible scream, saw me at the dust needle store. Ah, no! So we'll be with us, the dog good as clutching his arm and wailing. Cry, baby, said Henry. Just wait, Henry, sobbed William. Nurse Needle came into the waiting room and closed his eyes. Don't speak me, he begged silently. Don't speak me. Susan, said Nurse Needle. Susan crashed into Nurse Needle's office. Ah, carried a terrible squeeze. Ah, no! They saw Susan wrap herself as clutching her up and sniveling. What a cry, baby, said Harry. Well, we all know about you, Harry, said Susan sorely. Oh, dear, said Harry. He doesn't know anything. Does he not appear? Reappeared. Harry hit his face behind his head. I will be so good if it's not me, he thought. Please let it be someone else. Margaret, said Nurse Dito. Henry relaxed. Hey, Margaret, did you know the needles are so big and sharp they can right, go right through the arm, said Harry. But Margaret ignored him and back into Nurse Dito's office. Harry could hardly wait for a terrible twist. Boy, with his teeth that cry, baby Margaret, suddenly Silence the body while responded into the waiting room, proudly displaying an enormous plaster on her arm. She smiled at Harry. Ooh, Harry, you won't believe the needles he's using today, said Margaret. It's as long as my leg. Shut up, Margaret, said Harry. He was breathing very fast and fast, fast. Anything wrong, Harry? asked Margaret sweetly. No, said Harry. He scowled at her. 
I've never seen her scream and cry. Oh, good, said Margaret. I trust Fatsy to watch you because I have never seen such a big, fast, goopy needles in all my life. Hardly Harry steadied himself. So that would be different. He would be brave. He would be fearless. He would bash each other. The needles of his offer his hands and dare her to do her worst. Yes, today was the day. Brave Harry, he would be caught. The boy who laughed when the needle was in. The boy who asked for a second detection. The boy who... Henry, said Nurse Needle. No, screamed Harry. Please, please, no. Yes, said Nurse Needle. It's your turn now. Harry forgot he was brave. He forgot he was fearless. He, he, Harry forgot everyone was watching him. Harry started screaming and was screeching and kicking. Ah, oh, zap that. Ah, oh, zap perfect speed. Ah, oh, zap lazy leather. The air was like screaming and screeching. I don't want an injection sweet. Henry, I don't want an injection sweet, says Henry. I don't want a in I don't want an injection sweet tough Tom. Stop it, said Nurse Needle. You need an injection and an injection is what you will get. He first screamed. Harry bought the S B. You are just a baby, Harry says. That's dead. As no one ever called Harry a baby alive. He kicked her as hard as he could. Claire screamed. Nurse Needle and Dad each grabbed one of Harry's arms and wrapped them howling in her office. Perfect speeder followed behind the whistle softly. Henry wriggled free and dashed out. Dad dashed there and brought it back. Nurse Needle drove Claire shut behind them. Harry stood in the corner. He was trapped. Nurse Needle kept her distance. Nurse Needle knew Henry. That's a heater's at the gesture. He just took her. Elton, there to come in. What's the trouble, nurse? He asked. He asked. Hey, I'm saying, nurse, you know, he doesn't want an injection. Doctor, there kept a distance. Doctor, there notices new Henry. Last time, he just had an injection. He just bitten, bitten her. Take a seat, Henry, said Doctor. That's all. Henry collapsed in a chair. There was no escape. Escape. What's the first of a little thing like an injection, said Dr. Dato. Call me if you need me, she added as left the room. Harry sat on a chair, breathing hard. He tried not to look as Nurse Needle sent a gigantic file of sirens. You know, I also have injection. Yeah. So that you see this one? See the circle? That's my injection. I remember the first day when I have an injection. It's still there. Yeah, the injection stays there. Harry set. Oh. But he could not stop himself peeking through his fingers. He watched as he got the injection ready. Choosing the longest chap is most work needle Harry had ever seen. The nurse needle approached, weapon in hand. In first read, Harry, perfect. Peter sits down and rubs out his sleep. I will go first, Peter. I don't smile. Oh, he said as he was trapped. That was perfect, said nurse needle. What a good boy you are, said that. Perfect. Peter smiled proudly. Nurse needle rammed itself. Hard Harry is right back in the hole. Chair. He looked all right wildly. Then Harry noticed the row of little medicine bottles lined up on the counter. Nurse Needles was spilling her injections from them. Harry looked closer. The labels do not give injections if a child is very rich or his ill. Nurse Needles came closer, brandishing the injection. Harry coughed and closed and sneezed and closer. Harry wheezed and rasped and panted. Nurse Needles looked up. Are you alright, Harry? No, guess Harry. I'm here. My teeth hurts. My head hurts. My throat hurts. Nurse Needle fed the sweaty boy. Harry cough again. A red throat throat he cough. I guess me, he choked. Asthma. He doesn't have asthma. Asthma. And me said that. I do too, said Harry gasping for breath. Nurse Needle breath. He's a little warm, she said. I'm here, whispered Harry. But I felt terrible. Nurse Needle put down a siren. I think he deserves bringing him back when he's feeling better, 
she said, all right, sit down. Here's a picture of Henry's mother brought him next to Henry wheezes in his morning run all the way home. His parents put his stretcher bed. Oh, mom, said Henry, trying to do that as quick as possible. Will you bring me some chocolate ice cream to suit my toes? It's very hot. Of course, said mom, you poor boy. Henry snuggled down in the corn skins. I think it was the last. Oh, mom, I did any coming. Will you bring up the TV? Just in case my head stops hurting long enough for me to watch. Of course, said mom. Oh, he was raised on Terry. No intention, no school tomorrow. Super in bed. There's a knock on the door. He must be wrong with his eyes free. I sat out in bed. I remembered he was young. He lay close his eyes. Come in, mom, said Eric hoarsely. Hello, Henry. And he opened his eyes. It wasn't, mom. It was Dr. the Chow. And he closed his eyes and had a terrible coughing in his What hurts, said Dr. Dental. Everything said, Henry, my head, my throat, my chest, my eyes, my ears, my back, and my legs. Oh dear, said Dr. Dental. She took out a stethoscope and listened to Eric's chest. All clear. She stuck him a little stick in his mouth and said, ah, all clear. She said his eyes and ears, his back. And it's like everything was. Well, doctor said, uh, Doctor, they just took a head. She looked right. It's very interesting, Doctor. They told this only one girl. What's that, Mom? What's that? That's an injection. Hot <coughs> Mary and the Secrets Club. Hot. Who goes there? Me. Who's me? Said Mother. Me, said Sotheby. What's the password? Uh, so to the boss. What's, what's the password? She thought that she thought. But she just Margaret said that what was she first with just a stupid person? No, it isn't. Yes, it is, I Susan. But they just was last week. Password said Margaret. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was said Margaret. It's my club and I decide. There was a long pause. All right, said Susan slowly. What is the password? I don't know. If I'm going to tell you, said Maurice, I could be giving away a big secret to the enemy. But I'm not the enemy, said Susan. I am Susan. Shh, said Maurice. We don't want the enemy to put at who's in the secret club. Susan looked quickly over her shoulder. The enemy was never to be seen. She whistled twice. All clear, said so Susan. Now let's me. Only Margaret thought for a moment, but it's so hard it was that the password broke the post club group to me. You're Susan, and not the enemy Jenny to be Susan. So, well, you know, it's me, why it's Susan. Prove it. So, I stuck a boot in her tent. I wear the black patent leather shoes with the blue flowers. I always wear no good so Margaret, and we could stolen them. I am speaking with Susan's voice, and I know what Susan says. No good, said Margaret. The enemy will be a master of disguise. Susan stepped up with and I know that you were the one who picked her up. And when you tell Miss Conqueror to the chest, but I said, Margaret, Susan, wait up. Now listen to me. Because they're only going to tell you what. When a secret club member wants to come in this Nunga, and what is it? And it's like Nunga Nu. That's how I know it's you, and you know it's me. Nunga says, so Susan. Nunga Nu, said Margaret. Enter. So the enter the club. She get the secret and shake. She says that on the both ends up. You knew it was me all along, says Susan. Mary scowled at her. That's not the point. If you don't want to obey the club rules, you can leave. Susan didn't move. Can I have a speech? Yes, he said. But Grace smiled graciously. Have truth, she said. Then we get down to business. Meanwhile, he got on the bush. <coughs> we asked some rather gooey <coughs> place branches. Another top secret meeting was taking place in the next door. Got I think that's everything, said the leader. I'll show and I'll put the place into action. What am I going to do, said Perfect? Here, stand guard, said Horace Henry. Horace Henry. 
I always have to stand guard to Peter as the leader, Chris adds. It's not fair. Then he brought your spy report, said Margaret. Yes, said the really lad, said Margaret. So I took out a piece of paper and read. I watched the enemy class for two hours yesterday morning. Which morning? interrupts Margaret. Saturday morning. A lady with gray hair and the barrels walked past. What color was the barrel? said Margaret. I don't know, said so the How you said spy and you don't need what color the barrel was? said Margaret. Can I please continue with my report? said Susan. I'm not stopping you, said Margaret. You know, so the enemy leave the house with his father and The enemy killed his father twice. His mother said it that thing. Then I saw the post. Noon gas with the walls around us. Margaret is with the post. Noon gas. Wait, what's the case? I know you are in the engine. Ah, so it's, it's, it's very quick hard, it's Margaret. The silver stars crash behind two boxes. You tell the air pass was his mother. How dare you? It wasn't me, it's Susan. I couldn't even remember it. So how would I tell them? You tell them, didn't it's Margaret. No, God, screech area again. You have to let me in, I know the password. What do we do, it's Susan? He said, anyone who knows the password enters for the last time. Noonga! <laughs> said his horse, Harry. Noonga, no, said Margaret. Enter. And squawked into the tent. Margaret glared at him. That's Monday, my dude, said Harry. Let me on the chocolate biscuits and stuff himself into his mouth. Then he sprawled, he sprawled on the rock, scattering crumbs everywhere. What are you doing, said Arthur Henry. Nothing, said Woody Margaret. Nothing, said Saucer. You are too, said Harry. Mind your own business, said Margaret. Now, so let's vote on waiter, so low boys, and I vote. No, I will vote. No, too, said Susan. Sorry, Harry, you can join now. Leave. Eh. No, said Harry. Leave, said Margaret. Make me, said Henry. Margaret took a deep breath. Did she open the man's screen? No one could scream as loud or as long or as piercingly as Moody Margaret. As a few moments, Susan started screaming too. Harry got to his feet, knocking over the crates they used as a table. Watch out, said Harry Reed, because the bookman will be back. He said to go. Moody Margaret sprang up behind him and pushed him through the flap. Harry landed in a heap of sand. Can't guess me, said Harry. Picked himself up and tried the wood while the purple hand is the best. Oh, yeah, my other Margaret. We will see about that. Henry checked over his shoulder to make sure no one was watching. Then he crashed back to his porch. Smelly toes, he whispered to the guard. The branches padded. Henry climbed in. Did you attack them? And Peter, of course, said Henry. Then you hear Margaret screaming. I was the one who heard the pastor, so I hear I should have gone, said Peter. Whose clock is this, said Harry? The corner of Peter, so I began to turn that rust now, said Harry. Sorry, me. Sorry, said Peter. Please, Harry. Can I be a real member of the program? No, said You are too young. And now you dare come into the post when I'm not here. I once said, be a girl, said Now here's the plan. I'm going to start a booby trap in my research. That way, she goes in her street with his laser as he pictured my legs and covered in cold muddy water. All oh, was not to wear back as only my legs secret that I saw for some of us. It's his ancestors. You should uh, blah, blah, man said, You are a terrible spy. I am not said to the but I'm leader and I beg you from the club for a week for breaking our guard room telling the enemy I will pass for the go away. Oh, please let me stay, said Susan. No, said Margaret. Susan knew there was no point again with Margaret when she got that horrible, bossy look on her face. Yes, I'll be, said Susan. But Margaret picked up a book and started to read. So she got up and left. I know you, what you, you will do to place every house, Margaret. I will set the booby trap in every sports. So when he goes in, Barbara speaks with Nathan as he picks up Harry covered in cold body water. A tiny room. But Bob didn't see outside anything. Notice anything, Bob, said Peter. Mom looked around. No, said Bob. Oh, said Peter. Was I haven't made my bed, said Peter cleverly. 
to you to remember is wash day, said Mom. Make sure the seat and dove is covered. <coughs> it's good and big appearance the pajama top. Thank you, dear, said Ma. She smiled and left. Peter Brown, clearly he could need to work harder as being hurry. He looked at his beautifully arranged books. No, he guessed as a red bow toss stick into his head. Said Peter, squared his shoulders. Today was his only day, said, and the hardest he would be. He went up to his book and knocked her over. Harry, Peter, the luggage up to speed. It's not past years, though. Peter decided he would call Harry a uh, holiday. Hello, ugly, said Peter. And then he was wild and stuck at his tongue. Harry met into Peter's bedroom. He grabbed Peter. What did you call me? said Peter. This way, my Ready to room. Stop being horny, Harry. Look what the mess you have made in here. He called me ugly, said Harry. Of course he did, said Mom. He did, so said Harry. Peter never calls me both names, said Mom. I picked up those books you knocked over. I didn't knock them over, said Harry. Well, who did, said The man in the moon, said Mom. Harry pointed at Peter. <coughs> he did, said Harry. Did you hear he wants it to be really, really hard and tell a lot, but he couldn't. I did it, Mom, said Peter. Boy, would you get told of that? That would be silly, of course. You did not say, Mom. Your choice says that to protect Harry. But smiled at Peter and flat at Harry. Now, he, now leave Peter alone and get to rest, said Mom. But it's the weekend, said Harry. So? But Peter's not rest. Actually, you were just about to get rest before your bath is, said Mom. See, he's already taken his pajama off. I just want to get rest, said Peter proudly. Yo, poor baby. You poor boy, said Mom. You must be feeling ill. Pop back into bed and I will bring your breakfast up. Just let me put some clean cheese on. Perfect. We just got a tiny scowl. Well, he wasn't very good as we hard it did. You could have to try harder. As large Peter is passed out with this big. No. But don't you there is good a person with both fists and snubs up into his back. Harry, you suppose it that he is back into his back. Peter, are you joking? Say that Harry spit across the table. Harry, stop that disgusting speech in this instant, said Mom. Peter cheers with his mouth open. <coughs> Peter is there something wrong with your teeth, said Mom. Harry jumped and rippled and got with his eyes as well over as possible. Harry, this is your last warning. Teach a man just when you are easy, said his dad. Peter did not understand. I didn't anyone notice how old he was. Stressed at the food and kicked Harry under the table. Harry kicked him and caught him. Peter shrieked. Harry got told off. Peter got desserts. Goodbye, friends. You later have a nice day.